Mech Warrior 4 Black Knight. Welcome to Kantaris, Merc. We've got sea bills to earn. Black Knight came out a year after Vengeance as an expansion pack for its campaign. And boy, does it contain all the difficulty spikes and random bullshit that expansion packs of the era has always had. This time around, we follow Eric McClare, a mercenary, hardened in combat and paid handsomely for it. He used to be a member of the Federated Sons Armed Forces, but several years ago he ignored a superior officer's retreat order to try and save a fallen comrade. And I can get up! Unfortunately, they didn't pull through, and he got a less than honourable discharge for this act of heroism. However, unemployment doesn't last long for someone with his skill set. He is quickly picked up by the Black Knight Legion Mercenary Company, and given a chance to earn his sea bills the best way he knows how. As a member of the Legion's Striker Lance, we're out on the Capellan border doing anti-piracy operations for a local mining company. We choke out the pirates by blowing up their fucking oxygen and water processors, holy shit. Then we spring an ambush on the pirate counterattack. The pirates are pretty pissed about their buddies drinking vacuum and they try and take it out on us. Eat shit, asshole. Finally, we attack the pirates' landing site, crushing them outright and ending their operations on this moon. And as their dropship starts to flee, suddenly a blast from the sky blows it apart. A Lyran dropship enters the scene, and they have an interesting proposition. Greetings. You must be the Black Knights. I have need of your services. You have a little... Rebellion on Gantaris that I would like you to take care of. That'll be four bucks, baby! You want fries with that? We might be insane mercs, but we can't just rock up into Gantaris orbit. We'd get blown to bits by planetary defenses. No. To get planet side, we're gonna have to be smuggled there. Lawhorn works out a deal with that mining company we just finished working for to smuggle Striker Lance planetside. Once there, we blast our way out of the spaceport and set up a field HQ in the wilderness. It turns out that Ian's rule isn't all sunshine and rainbows, and many of the forces that helped him take the throne are now fighting to take it back from him. Well, fuck. While doing a mission to cut off enemy air support, we pick up a distress call from... Uh, Damien Squire. I guess he didn't die trying to save Joanna. Well, we go save him and his mech. Every ally planet side helps, and doubly so if they're a mech jock. Next up, we have to expand our supplies. Being smuggled kind of limited the amount of gear we could bring, so we need to do a little on-site procurement. To achieve this, we first blow up a comm station to create a radio blackout, and raid a local supply depot. Our techs then swoop in and snag some mechs. And of course, we have to then go help some nearby rebels. Well, geez, thanks for saving us. Stop fucking getting into trouble like this! What are we looking for again? An imaginary face. Gentlemen, welcome to Kantaris. After ambushing some local security and then blowing up some fat ass orbital defense lasers, we're gonna kill Casey. <laughs> Our beloved clown boy is currently running a pilot academy, so we show up and obliterate the trainees to bait him out. Warning, armor breached. Warning, damage critical. Attention, all students, stand out and evacuate. We are under attack. Aww, is the clown car empty? Who the fuck? Who? Who is? What? I should kick your fucking ass. Who is this? Comstar! We're reaching out to you about your mech's extended warranty. Ah, yeah, smart-ass merc. Does killing rookies make you feel like a big man? <laughs> no, but I needed to warm up. All right, asshole. Come here. I'm going to show you what happens in Undertale. Oh, don't tell Big Shot Man over here about, about the snow grave route. He probably wouldn't even have the stomach to do it, big fucking weenie wussy wussy bastard. Oh, look at this guy. Hey, I'm the main character of Mech Warrior 4 Black Knight. I'm so cool. Look at me. I'm killing people because we canonically made the bad ending the, the real one. Because we're, we're awesome. We can do whatever we want. We can make the games bad and the canonical despite the fact you don't need the supplies to finish the last mission. Oh! With the orbital defense grid down momentarily, the Legion brings all of its forces to bear on the planet. With all these extra forces, we're reassigned to guarding the flank. It's a comfy mission and- OH FUCK WE'RE BEING DOUBLE-CROSSED! 
We cover the evacuation of our surviving support staff while Lawhorn fucking dies! What were Steinermex doing assaulting us alongside Rosari? It was Dupree. We backed Ian into a corner with our initial assault, and she offered him a way out. The non-aggression pact that keeps Drasari neutral in the Steiner Davion conflict. Well, there goes our fucking payday. Eric then realizes he's the most senior officer left, and takes command of the remaining Legion forces, adopting the call sign Black Knight. Later, we discover a political prisoner camp that holds Legion survivors, as well as free Kantaris army rebels. So, we stage a prison break and liberate them. Rescue chopper's loaded, ready for exodus. Among those found is Carl Sontag, Ian's former chief engineer. All I did was call Ian a bitch in council and he threw me in here. Carl then gives us the location of a major firebase in the region. So we go and blow the shit out of it! Why is it Why? It's time to siege the capital. Ian is sweating bullets, and has imposed martial law to try and crush the uprising. Huh. Deja vu. We do a little recon to find a nice staging ground. Our arrival also lines up with the Free Guitarist Army launching its own attempt to take the city, and since we were so nice to them during the campaign, they don't open fire on us. Looks like we're going to have some help on this mission. Thanks, bro! Looks like you guys are gonna need a hand. Squire One, requesting permission to join attack. Granted. It's worth mentioning here, since I forgot to in the previous video, but the AI really sucks at navigating cities, like, god damn. I thought the levels were just harder, but no, it's because I'm doing it by myself. After pushing the Drasari forces out of the streets, they retreat to the city center. Good. Now all our targets are in one place. Cut them down to the last. Drasari forces eliminated. We pursue Ian all the way back to his palace, where he makes his last stand alongside his royal guard. McQuarrie, Gonzalez, rally to me. Together we can push these bastards back. Hiding behind your land spades, huh? At least Casey does. And what could you possibly know of honor, Merc scum? It costs extra. Now come die like your sister. You... You insolent cur! <laughs> I will have your flayed body hung from my neck, you fuck! Oh, someone's mad. When will you learn? When will you learn? That your actions have consequences! The Duke is dead. But our vengeance is incomplete. No, that damn Steiner officer who hired us still breathes and has fled to another world the volcanic Voltrat Free. You know, a wise man once told me, if it's, it's worth, worth blowing, blowing up, up, it's worth blowing up by the Megaton. So we hot drop planet side and quickly move to take over a Steiner missile base. Coyote, get back to the dropship now. Rolling, follow the missile, then route to separate target groups. Good work, team. Scheiße! Our atomic opening volley puts the Steiner forces in massive disarray, with only two major facilities surviving the missile strikes. And we're gonna finish them off, marching straight into the volcanic, radioactive hellscapes like men possessed. This area really busts my balls. The spicy moon makes laser boats far too weak to be reliable, so I switch to my other favorite strategy, free LBX-10s. The first target is the sole surviving mech works on the planet. Legion ground infantry help us secure the facility and the goods within. By taking out the barracks first, our reinforcements can even take over some of the pilotless mechs to give us support against the coming counterattack. The second target is an elite training academy. Elite pilots or not, we can't have them interfering when we move on Dupree. These are some of the best in the Steiner military, here to hone their skills to a razor edge. Ever see a razor blade get hit with a hammer? This mission opens with a really shitty ambush. It sucks. But at least we can exploit the repair base here. Oh, oh god, he's fully repaired! <laughs> now cut off from any route of escape, Dupree is about to learn why you don't shortchange a merc. You end up paying interest in blood. 
The remaining members of Hammerlance hold off the Steiner reinforcements as we go face Dupree ourselves. The push up to her base is pretty straightforward. As the last of her guards fall, she appears herself, sniping our lance mates and engaging us one on one. Why couldn't you just die like the rest of your pitiful company? Why could you possibly gain from killing me? I'm not gonna be denied my neck warrior for vengeance! And that was MechWarrior 4 Black Knight, a fun little expansion that gives us a bit more campaign, a few new mechs, and some new weapons to put on them. But the plot just feels... Uh, off. The introduction of these new characters, as minor as they were, in a setting already as notoriously in-depth as Battletech, might have been seen by some as a bad move? Especially considering how Vengeance has two endings. So I think the writer just tried to wipe the slate clean with the expansion. Not that it really matters, of course. As Sana points out, the Battletech IP owners are ambivalent about plot points made in the games, treating them as non-canon, but sometimes taking select points to integrate as they see fit. Or, you know, just straight up copying designs from the games when they want to add new mechs. Well, next time, we'll tackle the standalone expansion, Mercenaries. And by next time, I mean right now, Mercenaries! When people talk about MechWarrior 4, most of the time, they mean mercs. It's a standalone title with a non-linear campaign centered around running your own mercenary company. What could be better? Wander around the galaxy, take whatever jobs you want, follow a number of story paths, or just go to Solaris and become the greatest gladiator ever! Think of it as the Dark Crusade to Black Knight's Winter Assault. This popularity is largely due to how accessible it is compared to the other titles. About eight years after MechWarrior 4's release, a fan modding group known as MechTech managed to secure the rights to release a free, custom version of the game from... Uh, let me see here... Microsoft? How the fuck did they pull that off? The legality of this freeware release is grey nowadays. MechTech has stopped distributing it, and while Microsoft still own the rights of the game, they've made no attempts to stop it spread elsewhere. I don't even think it's available for purchase from them. I think they're turning a blind eye to this. I mean, it's not like they get a ton of sales if they suddenly pulled it, just bad press. Regardless, the MechTech release of Mercs is still arguably the best way to play MechWarrior 4 today, with limited to no patching required to get the game to run on modern systems, and a ton of new mechs integrated into the campaign, including some original designs that would later be integrated into the canon. You can, uh, also play as infantry. <laughs> It also comes with a new soundtrack that drops the dramatic space opera vibes of the Vengeance OST in favour of more grinding industrial rock beats. Strangely, I don't like this soundtrack as much. It doesn't feel as unique or as standout as Vengeance did, but it does have some good tracks. What's interesting is that this is another part of the Mercs branding. The previous Mercs titles had a similar shift to- Oh wait, shit, I've not mentioned that yet! MechWarrior 4 Mercs isn't the first standalone game to carry that title. MechWarrior 2 also had a standalone Mercs expansion. And it isn't the last. MechWarrior 5 just skips straight to dessert. What's interesting is that this thematic change is consistent. Hell, listen to some music from MechWarrior 2. Now listen to some music from MechWarrior 2 Mercs. Now, since I've played this game like a million times, I figured I'd try something new and cracked out this cheapo flight stick to get the immersive gaming experience. I was pleasantly surprised when the game recognized it immediately. No tweaks or anything. Sick. I ended up using a combo of the stick and mouse, which felt really comfortable, 
and the range of accessible buttons meant that I drifted away from my all weapons on mouse one loadouts. Now, let's get back to the campaign. You start out by picking a company name and a sponsoring faction. Yeah, there we go. The campaign itself consists of several branching quest lines, with the player often given the chance to pick between both sides of an engagement. Your choices do, however, affect what options you have later down the campaign. The main meat of the game, especially with the mech tech packs installed, is seeing all the cool mechs and gear you can buy on your quest to be the best. Quite a bit of it is non-canon, looking at you continuous beam lasers, but I think we've established at this point that canon means little to nothing to the video games. Our early missions revolve around low-level security details and raids. A local world is making an attempt at independence from the Lyrans, and we can be hired by either side of that conflict. Let me just buy a light mech and- Ooh, the Dasher! Unironically, one of my favorite designs. Just look how fast he is! Zoom! We continue on with these contracts, and shit, the difficulty is spiking pretty quickly. We're going nowhere fast, and we're kind of running out of money. Well, we could always do some time in the arena to make some cash. And I've got just the thing to help out. Right, let's do this. Game on! Shotgun! Double kill! Another next down, this time to Spectre. Rebirth comes for the half of battle. Target destroyed. Target eliminated. Shotgun. Physically <laughs> remove a chunk of shit off your opponent and throw that shit on the floor. Yeah. What? Attention, Freebirth scum! For the crime of calling me and my clan stinky chew babies, I hereby declare a formal patrol. Oh, fuck. I will fight you, and I will kill you, uh, until you are dead. Today. Uh, hold on, I, I've got a... Oh shit, oh fuck, oh shit, oh fuck, oh shit, oh fuck. Attention, clan of force. I have the best mercenaries my fight money goodbye. Okay, actually, I just have any merc who would answer the phone. But who cares? Let's rock! I'm on the 50% strike. I'm out of here. You fought well for a free bath. This will be an honorable death. Oh, hell no. I'm capturing you like a Pokemon. Wait, what? And just like that, we use the clan's stupid laws of war to capture one angry swordbird. I hope it was everything you wanted, sir. I could go on exploring more of the missions, but honestly, I wouldn't be covering anything new. Its branching and non-linear nature means I can't cover the whole campaign in a single run, and I'm not going to do a deep dive on every single mission. Plus, my hand hurts from holding this stick so much. Oh my. And that was MechWarrior 4 Mercs. The ending does tease a sequel hook that we never got, namely the player versus the Word of Blake. But wait! Aren't you gonna cover multiplayer? <laughs> no. Next up, we return to the CNC franchise. But until then, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I thank you for watching. Have I heard of Mental Omega? Yes, I have. It is good. Would I consider making a video about the Syndicate games? Yes. Will this question be in the Q&A? Barrage. Outpost 2? Yes. Although it might take some time. What's your opinion on Tempest Rising? Oh god, yes! That's it!